What's going on filmmaking friends, folks, and fam jam? It's your boy, Zach here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to do these things a little bit better, the talk to camera style things. Let's say you're a one man band and wanting to do a talk to camera vlog, or you're doing a cooking show, or you wanna upgrade the quality of your latest thing that you have going on online, but the problem is with COVID, you don't have a crew to help you with that. Well, I wanna talk about how to do these things, be a personality on camera, but how to actually shoot yourself on a much more cinematic level without actually having to upgrade with bigger crews and kits and gear and all that fun stuff. We're gonna be talking about sort of my top five ways of how to do that, but I'll probably go overboard on top, over top of the top five. I'm gonna out top the top five. I'm gonna top the top five. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is your camera setup. What your whole rig is, what you're shooting on, that sort of thing. Um, I think the first thing to uh, recognize when shooting these talk to camera videos is how do you stand out from the crowd? I think one of the first things to do is actually buy your lens choice. Now the obvious lens choice of shooting selfie stuff is to film on a 16 millimeter wide, you're kind of doing your vlog, talk to camera, that sort of thing. Or if you set the camera up on a sort of surface and film yourself from that perspective, you're gonna shoot it on a nice wide because it's safe. And for me, I know that strategy and what I'll do just as a little tip for that part is to shoot in 4K and then I can scale and kind of steal the frame that I want lazily in post-production as opposed to framing properly on set. But what I would offer as a suggestion is what if you shot it from a perspective of 50 millimeter or 35 millimeter? and change the focal length. So essentially, instead of getting that ultra wide of kind of filming everything, but not anything specific, all you have to do is punch in a little bit and all of a sudden the shot just looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit juicier. It looks more cinematic and thought out. But then you're like, whoa, whoa, Zach, but I don't have a monitor to look at that. I can't m imagine what the frame looks like because uh, I don't have a fold out screen or I can't look that far away, I need glasses. Well, what I actually have is I play this game called the Field of View game, which I think belongs in its own separate tutorial, but essentially every lens or focal length that you're shooting on has a field of view within it. And as soon as you understand what that field of view looks like, it can better help you comprehend what is in frame and what is not. So for example, a 16 to 35 has got a field of view about this wide. You're able to capture basically everything. And let's say you're a little dot in the center of that. Now, when you start to go in on your focal length, and let's say you go to a 35 mil, your field of view gets to be that smaller. And again, you're still that little dot in that frame. So you gotta go up a little bit further to keep a nice wide background at the bottom. But then as you start to go closer to maybe let's say a 50 mil, your field of view gets this wide. So this is the frame you've got to live in. And so if you want a bit of a background, you move up slightly, okay? But then let's say you're I don't know, your field of view is now a 70 mil, then a 100 mil, and then a 200 mil. That dot of where you are gets smaller and smaller and you've gotta move up a little bit. So understanding what your field of view can really help, and this is just by trial and error, test and play. Another key thing to think about is to stop being a perfectionist when it comes to your field of view. So I recently just shot this little short film um, about stormy days. I shot the entire thing by myself, doing it as sort of like my own character within this film. And I disassociated myself from expectation of the perfect shot. And I was just okay if it went out of focus or if I was out of frame or I didn't get myself 100% lined up. And what ended up happening is I got some really cool artsy shots, we'll call it, but really it was just an error on frame and it ended up working really well. So you don't necessarily need to always get the perfect shot always so long as your bar of expectation isn't there. But let's say it is. Let's say your bar of expectation is high. How do you get really nice cinematic shots with a good field of view but you don't have a, a camera person. What you guys can do is have a stand-in. Now, the traditional one that a lot of filmmakers use is your hand. So, so if you're I'm doing like a selfie um, camera video, but you wanna get your white balance set up and you wanna look at your monitor for doing better. that, let's say you're um, shooting on an older Sony yeah. camera that doesn't have the fold-out screen, you know what I'm talking about. What you'll do is you'll put your hand in front of the camera and then just give that a gander and look at what is the white balance of that, what is the exposure, your focal length, all of that, 
and then when your hand is that far out, that's probably how far out your camera is going to be when you're doing it in this mode. And fortunately, your skin tone is relatively close to the way your your hand's skin tone is. I mean, if you wear gloves or maybe you burned your hand, this might not work, but usually nine times out of 10, it's a good exposure uh, leveler for whenever you're working on doing these things. My light went out back there. I apologize if this shot all of a sudden just got way less depthier. But I'll, I'll, I'll adjust this light so that it, it looks a little bit better. So, um, you expose to your hand, you expose to what your hand looks like on that, and that is a good gauge on what to do. But let's say you've got the camera set up on a tripod and you've got it far in a distance, but you still want to gauge your focus, you're doing manual focus, all that fun stuff. Well, don't be afraid of anything like that. What I would say is what you can do is um, actually bring in a bit of a stand in. So what I'll use is like a tripod, I'll set it up in the distance or I'll put a, like a broom uh, out there and then like tape something to it so I can focus on that broom. Or you can put a little like spot of where you're gonna be standing and know that you're gonna be standing by this counter at this spot and then uh, get your focus by knowing that the edge of the counter at this specific space is where you're going to be standing. And uh, this is all obviously if you're using manual focus. I've heard that like other filmmakers, one filmmaker who shot an entire feature film who I met, uh, by himself, he used a balloon. He had a little red balloon and that's how he got his focus, his framing, and then he would just stand where the balloon was. So there's many different methods of how to frame something when you're not actually in the shot. And if you are, maybe let's say at home, you are the personality and you do have people around, what you can always do is ask for mom, dad, boyfriend, girlfriend, roommate, whomever, to stand in the shot, get your frame and be like, okay, I got it, now I'm gonna hop in. So let's say you're, you're hopping into doing the, the setup with the camera, you know your focal length, you know your shot that you wanna get, what is the best camera settings for this? Personally, I actually think auto settings uh, are the best. Whenever you're shooting, talk to camera and you don't know what's going on in the camera, the best things I would say is have a good sharp lens that works on autofocus. Um, whenever I do these videos, nine times out of 10, it's on autofocus unless I can know that I'm nailing my focal length, which uh, a quick way to make sure that your focus is pretty much sharp all the time is to lower your f-stop, widen your frame. And again, if you can do autofocus, super helpful. If not, just make sure you're kind of in a, in a certain range on, on focus length, which um, let me know in the comments below if you want to learn a little bit more about how to make sure that you get razor sharp focus all the time. Um, but essentially, wider frame, lower f-stop is the way to do it. If for some reason you're shooting on a lens that doesn't do autofocus, but I would recommend having a lens that does autofocus. Put your white balance, either you can set it uh, to whatever your hand was within the shot, or put your white balance into auto white balance. Put your ISO into auto ISO. You're like, oh my God, Zach, you're telling me everything that I was told not to do. Um, these techniques that I've done, I've used on multiple short films that make it look like I have a full crew behind it, or at least I have a camera person, but I assure you, these are things that I've done by myself, and I'm able to get juicy, crispy images uh, from that that I'm really happy about. Okay, so we've talked about camera settings, we've talked about camera modes and shots and angles. Uh, let's dive into the rigs, the gear, lighting, stabilizers, that fun stuff. One of my major pieces of gear that I use consistently is a tripod for this sort of stuff. Uh, I love using a tripod. You're able to get nice crispy shots and you can always angle and maneuver it into the best angles always. And um, again, I've done so many like B-roll style shots where the camera's just set up on this and then I'll do like a keyframe Ken Burn and there'll be a link to a Ken Burn tutorial in the description below. And that's how you can add a bit of camera movement or camera operator in post-production. But let's say you don't have a tripod. Well, how do you do this stuff without a tripod? Should you just give up? No, you don't, you shouldn't give up. And the amount of times that I have used this thing, my, my little wallet that's in my pocket, this thing is a lifesaver. They, someone should patent, a, hey, out there companies who are looking for filmmaking gear, patent something that's like a wallet for filmmakers that's like a little micro tripod. That would be the best. But I've used this thing so often on, on videos where essentially it's just taking my wallet, wedging it under my lens because your camera is usually front heavy and it'll sort of bob down where the lens is, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you pop this in and all of a sudden it just uh, pops your camera up. You set your camera on a countertop and Bob's your uncle, you're getting a shot of yourself that works for an edit for something. 
the amount of times I've done this is, is almost disappointing. But if you have a little bit of extra money in the budget, you can get something like a Switch Pod, which I don't own, um, but or, or you get something like a Gorilla Pod or some sort of pod to put your camera on, a tripod, Gorilla Pod, Switch Pod, any of the pods you put your camera on and you're able to get just different angles. So you shouldn't limit yourself to one fixed position or one fixed setup when you get yourself a pod, you're able to just maneuver your camera and put it wherever you please. But let's say you can't afford that. Let's say that's not in your budget range to have any of the pods. And so you're stuck to selfie mode. One of the things I do in selfie mode consistently, and again, I did this in my latest short film, Storms, where essentially I just put the camera in selfie mode on a 50 millimeter lens and just like maneuvered it around my head at, at 120 frames per second. I just didn't look at the camera. I just looked away. And what ended up happening was I was able to get an angle that I was like, yeah, this works. It totally works. It looks like someone else is filming. Just don't look at the camera. If you need to get B-roll shots of you doing something else, as, as long as you just, you bring it out, like do the side thing, like side selfie, we're gonna call that. We're coining it side selfieing. All of a sudden it's like, I got uh, uh, someone filming me and I've got a great cinematic shot of my ear. So, <laughs> so that's one way to get it with nobody. And then if you wanna use gear and like backyard tools, your wallet's the first step and then tripods, pods, any of the pods, just use a pod. Um, and then my final piece of gear that I wanna bring up for doing all of this fun stuff is a robotic slider, an automated slider, some sort of slider system. This, this slider has been able to give me those kind of camera operator-esque shots without actually having a camera operator. I've done talk to camera videos, I've done tutorials, but I'm not gonna digress into talking about sliders. I'll have a whole other tutorial on camera movement and all that fun stuff uh, available soon, or if it's out now, you guys can look at it in the description below. But yeah, using some sort of slider system is great, so long as you're able to frame your shot up um, properly. So. Just a bit of a redigestion of what I talked about. If you have zero pieces of gear, go selfie mode. Uh, if you have some time or money to invest into having some sort of rig, I would recommend getting a tripod or a gorilla pod so you can just mount it onto things. Uh, and then the upgraded version of that would be to be able to have a slider set up on a tripod. And again, you're able to just get some super duper silky smooth shots that work almost like stock footage quality. And just some simple basics of filming cinematic videos. Just make sure your lighting's nice, your camera is still and not bumping all over the place, that you are in focus and the shot is not underexposed or overexposed. And you should be able to come out with a relatively clean image as long as you're able to tell the story and um, explain what you are talking about to this type of thing. Um, if you clicked on this video to be able to learn a little bit more about how to do the talk to cameras and a bit of more of a cinematic quality, uh, I have a personal video on my own channel that you guys can take a look at uh, in the description below that talks about how to do talk to cameras a little bit better within that quality. This was obviously talking about the B-roll aspect of that, but I think it's almost just as crucial as the talk to camera element. So if you do wanna learn a little bit more about how to do these things to this level that I'm at, uh, there'll be a link to that in the description below. If you didn't have your pen and paper and jotting down notes as fast as you possibly could while this tutorial went out, that's a-okay. There will be a link to a tutorial uh, blog post in the description below on Premium Beat, the blog's uh, website. Uh, so you guys can give that a gander and take a look at that. And that's about it, folks. That wraps me up for today. Um, have a wonderful day, have a wonderful night or whatever you're you're watching this video just be wonderful be great and um be present i have a tattoo that says that on my arm but i don't know if you guys can see that but anyway that's it um adios amigos i never know how to leave these videos one day i'll get better at it but until then i'll just go bye <laughs>